Now let's have a look when we start to add some conditions on this. Okay, so part B, what, what conditions does it give us? How many different routes are possible if you must pass through, where's C? Where is it? It's four over, isn't it? Okay, here we go. Sort of diagonal, there we go, like that. Is that where C is? Okay. So if I want to pass through C, then I've got to go from A to, well you see I can't do this blue one, yeah? This blue one is a dud, it's no good. The black one's okay though, it passes through C. So in other words, you've got to go from A to C first, because I don't think you can backtrack, can you? You can't sort of climb back up, okay? So you've got to go from A to C, and that's kind of like its own mini problem, isn't it? From A to C, right? So if that's all you had to do, paths from A to C. What are you going to, how, are you, how do you get from A to C? How many rightward steps do you have to do? Two of them, right? How many downward steps do you have to do? Two. So you can either think of it as four factorial on two factorial, two factorial, or you can think of it as you've got four steps and you've got to choose two of them to be downward steps, right? Which gives you the other ones that are rightward, okay? That's how to get to C. What about from getting to C to B? How many steps in total, right and downward, do you have to make to get from C to B? Have a look. I count one, two, three, four, five, six steps. That should make sense because originally for the whole problem we said 10 steps and we've already done four of them to get to C. Does that make sense? So I've got six left and I've got to choose, well I've got to choose two of those steps to be right steps, don't I? Doesn't matter which ones they are. So 6C2, or you could do 6C4 if you like because that will be the same number. Okay, so I have two numbers. What am I going to do with these numbers? Am I going to add them or am I going to multiply them? Are you sick of me answering, asking this question yet? I'm going to multiply. Why am I going to multiply? Yeah, this is all together. I don't just want to land on C. I want to also go to B. These have to go sort of simultaneously, right? So my total paths, I should write total. That might be helpful. Total paths will be 4C2 by 6C2. What, what is that equal to? Is that 90? It's 90, right? There you go. Happy times. Okay. Yeah, did I get, yeah, no? Yes? Okay, great. Uh, it must be 6 times 15 is my guess. Is that right? Yeah? Because that's the middle of, anyway, okay, you get the point. Right, now it starts to get interesting because question C and question D have this interesting relationship which you might have noticed if you've already um, picked at the answers. So let's have a look at it together, right? How many different routes are possible if you cannot move along the top line of the grid? If you cannot move along the top line of the grid. So what are they saying, right? Well, what they're doing is they're transforming this problem a little bit. Let me get rid of this orange stuff because it's not relevant anymore. I'm not allowed to go along the top. So it's as if this top row doesn't exist, right? You're banned from going there. Is that okay? Now, as you can see, if the top row doesn't exist anymore, then um, I've got a whole bunch of other steps that I also cannot use, right? Which, um, or, or lines, paths, right? Which ones can't I use? If you can't use any of these top ones, how are you, for example, how are you going to get to this line to use it? Well, you can't get there to begin with, right? You can't go along and then sort of climb up, right? You have to come from the top. Does that make sense? So in removing the top row as one of the options, you've also removed these guys. Does that make sense? You see how we've transformed the problem? Okay. Now, I know this is going to sound a bit trivial, but it's a, an important question. This point here, right? I have to pass through there. Do you see that? Like that's the only way to go. Let's call that my new C, as it were. How many ways, not a rhetorical question, how many ways are there to get to C in this new situation? There is just one way, right? One way, right? And then I have to get from C to B. Well, how many total steps will it take me to get from C to B? It'll be nine, right? One less than I had before. I've already taken care of one of them. Nine, and you've got to choose, well, you can either do four or five, doesn't matter. Um, I've got to choose four of those nine steps to be a rightward step. Yeah, because there will be still one, two, three, four to the right that I have to do. Like so. Is that all right? Um, I don't know what that's equal to. Can someone tell me what it's equal to? 126. Okay. Now, when we do part D, okay, it sounds similar but different. How many different routes are possible if you cannot move along the second row 
from the top of the grid. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I am going to draw this diagram again. And maybe you want to do this as well. The diagrams are so helpful. I'm going to draw this diagram again. But then I'm going to try and see what this condition looks like on the new diagram. So I've got one, two, three. Mm -hmm. oh, how many do I have? One, two, three, four. There we go. Um, can someone count? Is that the right number of everything? Does it look okay? You happy? Yes? Okay, so it says how many different routes are possible if you cannot move along the second row? Now, to deal with part C, do you remember what I did before? I just removed the rows, the, the lines you couldn't use, right? I'm going to do the same thing here, okay? The second row is along here. Yes, do you see it? So I'm going to eliminate the second row as a credible option, right? So watch, like that, like that, like that, like that. Okay, so I've removed the second row. Are you happy with that, with me having done that? Okay, now when I removed the top row in the previous question, I also had to remove some other lines that sort of led from the top row. Do I have to remove any other lines at this point? Are you happy with that? That's okay. Um, so for example, what that means is, if for instance I was here and moved down and did that step, right? I can't use the second row, can I? Right, so I have to do this step, there's no other choice, right? In other words, there's only one way to get from, like it's actually one move even though in the original scheme it's two. Does this make sense? Okay, now have a look at this new diagram, this new grid, right? Um, it has this top row that's like twice the height of all the other rows. But in terms of the number of steps, it is, it's only one step, right? So now tell me, in this new grid, how many steps does it take to get from A to B? You, you can count them, right? Yeah, one, two, three, four rightward steps at any different point. They don't have to be along the top, obviously. Four rightward steps, and how many downward steps? Well, you can count them, right? One, two, three, four, five. Why are there only five and not six? I, I got rid of a row, right? It's gone. So that's why this up here, it functions like a single row of boxes, even though it used to be two, okay? So therefore, that's why I can say, well, the number of paths is just like what we did in part C. You've got nine total steps, and you've got to choose four of them to be rightward steps. Or if you like, you've got to choose five of them to be downward steps, right? It used to be six, but now it's five because this, which looked like a double move before, it's just one move now. That's the only way you can go. It's the only possible path, okay? So that's why when you go into the solutions, and if you get mystified, you're like, why are these two equal? Well, because you can retell the story so they are the same problem. Okay. Um, just to rewind right to the beginning, probably the hardest part of this was looking at this geometric problem and turning it into a word problem. We're quite good at these ones, right? Rearranging letters of words, okay? If you can come up with a way to state whatever problem you've got in these terms, then you can use all the tools and knowledge that you already have. Does that make sense?